there's only one thing better than a 1992 Fireblade, and that's pretty much all of the other Fireblades in existence in a row, all lined up at a racetrack here at Rockingham in the UK. We're looking at the 92, we're looking at pretty much the entire evolution of Fireblade. We're missing, I think, a 954 and an 08, but we're here to celebrate 25 years of both Fireblade and Type R, the car brand, Civic Type R, all that kind of stuff, Integra Type R, Accord Type R. We're going to get the chance to go out and play on the road in the cars. We're going to do some skids on the, on the kind of wet pan skid thing over the back and hopefully we're going to get the chance to go out on track and be driven far too fast by people that know what they're doing. So I can't not attempt one of those TV news producer style walk and talks. So I'm going to beckon you along and gamble on going backwards. Uh, definitely my favourite, still haven't ridden that 92, still don't want to ride it in case it's not as good as I think it is. Had a 918, stunt bike at Superbike, never really got to ride it, got blown up. Uh, this one was where they started to get a little bit fat and heavy, went fuel injected. This is probably still my favourite of the range. When you're 26 years old and you're a new staff writer at a motorbike magazine and you get asked to ride one of these everywhere, uh, you know you're doing the right job for a living. And now we're moving into the kind of modern era stuff. This Urban Tiger one kind of divides opinion. Uh, that paint job is about four bikes too far down the line on this generation of blade. Now we're into the modern era SP. We did the launch of this at Qatar years ago. There's a great video of that on YouTube. And now the current one, which is regardless of what you think about what it's doing on the racetrack, what it's doing at the Isle of Man, the sales success on the road in the UK has been fairly phenomenal. I think they're going to exceed a thousand units in the UK. We've got some footage to show you from the press launch that we did out in Portimao earlier on in the year. And we've got some great footage of us dicking around on cars with racers, uh, just enjoying the day, having the, the day here at Rockingham as a guest of Honda, enjoying two massively iconic brands. This is a compressed evolution of sports motorcycles in three simple steps. Late 1970s, this is kind of what men had to ride. Let's call this uh, Kawasaki Z900. Sping! About 10 years later, things are getting a little bit better, having a little bit more fun, a little bit lighter, a little bit faster. Let's call this the 1985 Suzuki GSX-R750. Sping! Fast forward to 1992, and what you're looking at is this. Absolute groundbreaking, all new 1992 Honda CBR900 RR Fireblade. So Honda have reworked and rejigged the total control principle that they started with this CBR900 RR behind me. The total control principle basically means we finally got some proper electronic software riding aids. Before we get into the meat of what makes this bike different to the outgoing one, it's important to let you guys know that there are over 90% new parts on this bike compared to the outgoing model. What that means in terms of power to weight is there's a 14% increase in the power to weight ratio between 2017 and 2016. So how do you make such a significant weight saving between 2017 and 2016? Well last night in the presentation the guys used this beautiful Japanese phrase which is if you, <clears throat> if you gather together enough of a pile of dust you can build a mountain and what they're trying to get out with that is they've just shaved little bits of weight out of here and there a couple of shorter engine bolts here different use of metals in the exhaust there trimming down the diameter and the width of the fairing panels all these little bits and pieces add up to a 15 kilo weight saving there's also a power increase so we're at 189 horsepower now across rr sp and sp2 and where they've achieved that is new pistons new comrades new heads bigger valves they've completely reworked the motor so what we've got here in this beautiful TFT screen is, if I'm honest, a mind-boggling array of adjustment. P, T, E, B, S. 
they all mean something important. They all make tiny but significant changes to the behavior and characteristic of the bike. Basically what you're looking at is different levels of power, different levels of torque control, otherwise known as traction control, different levels of engine braking, and different suspension settings. What we're looking at here is the SP version, so you have semi-active Olin suspension front and back. It is in that typical kind of Honda fashion. They've let everybody run off and have a go at making traction control and adding it to litre bikes. There are other manufacturers that are making semi-active suspension setups. Honda being Honda, kind of giving everyone a head start. Let them have a few years to, to, to refine what it is that they're doing. Like I said, I've spent a long time riding the old Fireblade, fast and slow, on track, off track, all over Europe. I'm a big fan, I was a big fan of the old Fireblade. This one feels like a Fireblade that's been to boot camp. It just feels like a really healthy, really strong, lightweight, lean version of the Fireblade that we all know and love. So one thing that became apparent to me pretty much on the first lap when I got onto the start-finish rate is just how tiny this new frontal area is here. It's been optimised for wind flow, but I don't necessarily think it's been optimised for um, lardy, bold, 14-stone journals like me because I really struggle to find somewhere to hide from the wind on the start-finish rate. So one of the big questions I was asking myself is does this bike generate power and does it do what it does like the old Fireblade or like a new BMW or a new ZX10? I'm going to say it still feels very much like the old Fireblade. I love the way that it goes about making its power but it does feel to me a little bit more like the power is tucked a bit further up the rev range and there is certainly more of it and there's certainly less bike to move as well so it does feel faster than the old Fireblade and it will be the kind of bike that can compete at track days and pub grade bullshit ammo with power to weight ratios and all of the stuff that people like to compare with ZX10, with R1, with new GSXR, we'll wait to find out. As it is, this is the best Fireblade I've ever ridden. This should be the perfect demonstration of both dry and wet grip in a... How many horsepower is this? 300 and something, possibly 12, I can't remember. 300 plus. Yeah. Right, so what can we do first? Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were yep, filming that's that. that's cool, that's perfect. <laughs> 300 plus. So it's a perennial question, car versus bike, which is best? You spend some time looking on YouTube, there are videos with millions and millions of hits. Bike World have got their own. We raced a H2 against a Nissan GTR with Luke early last year. You can see that over on YouTube. It's a good question. I'm a car guy, I'm also a bike guy. I would love to carry on working with bikes. I would love to get a job working with cars. To be honest, I think I'll be just as happy on either. The chance to spend some time with Iconic cars like the ones that you can see behind me, including this manual NSX, only a fool would pass up that opportunity. There is no science in today, there is no stopwatches, there was none of that kind of car v bike weirdness that you sometimes see. Just the chance to kick some really cool old tyres, two and four wheels. What better way to spend a Monday?